Hey guys, it's Mike Chen, and today our Myths and Legends series continues with another one of the four most beautiful women in Chinese history, Wang Zhaojun. And here's the thing, Wang Zhaojun was not only stunning, her beauty also managed to stop the Mongol invasion and brought decades of peace to China. Here's her story. Wang Zhaojun was born in the Western Han Dynasty in 52 BC. It was said that she was so beautiful that her appearance would even entice birds in flight to fall from the sky. Hence the saying, Zhaojun Luo Yan. Or Wang Zhaojun was so beautiful, birds even forget how to fly when they look at her. Wang Zhaojun entered the imperial palace during the reign of Emperor Yuan of the Western Han. And at the time, it was custom for the emperor to choose his companions from a vast group of maidens only by looking at their portraits because the emperor, he didn't have time to go on dates with all of them in person. As a result of this practice, ladies who want to become part of the emperor's harem would offer large bribes to court artists to ensure that they are painted in a very flattering portrait. It's kind of like bribing a photographer to photoshop your photo to make you look the best they can. Wang Zhaojun, however, was so confident in her natural beauty that she refused to pay the court's painter his customary bribe. As a result, the painter painted an ugly picture of her, and from her finished portrait, she seemed to be the ugliest of all the palace ladies and thus never received the emperor's favor. Now, at the time, there were a group of nomadic tribes living north of the Great Wall called the Xiongdu who were ancestors of the modern-day Mongols. And thousands of years ago, they made incursions into China on horseback, laying waste to the towns and villages. And when the Xiongdu chieftain Hu Hanxie became an ally of the Han Empire, he told Emperor Yuan that he wished to take a Han beauty as his empress. So to cement relations with this barbarous nation, Emperor Yuan agreed to the request. But of course, he didn't want to give away any of his pretty maidens, so he took a look through the portraits and picked the plainest girl for the marriage. So Wang Zhaojun was selected. There was another version of the story that says Wang Zhaojun actually volunteered for the role, and the emperor approved based on the painter's unflattering depiction of her. But regardless, it was only when Wang Zhaojun arrived before Emperor Yuan in the imperial court for her parting ceremony that the ruler of China realized the trickery of his court artists. Because standing before him was an absolute beauty whom he had just condemned to the north. The emperor was torn. At stake, of course, is the continued alliance between the Han Dynasty and the Xiongnu tribes, as well as the monarch's integrity, so he couldn't really go back on his word. But Hu Hanxie, on the other hand, was overjoyed to receive such a delightful maiden as his bride, and together they crossed the Great Wall into Mongolia. Later artists depicting Wang Zhaojun often portray her on horseback, wearing a red fur-lined coat and playing a pipa, a traditional Chinese stringed instrument as she makes her famous journey to the Mongolian plains. Now, despite their people normally being adversaries, the Xiongnu welcomed Wang Zhaojun with open arms. She gave birth to two sons and a daughter with the tribe leader, and Wang lived in peace until her death in 8 AD. And thus, through Wang Zhaojun's marriage, the Xiongnu and the Chinese enjoyed a long period of peaceful relations. Her burial ground, located in what is now Inner Mongolia, is said to have green grass growing on it all year long, earning it the title Green Tomb. Even today, Wang Zhaojun is celebrated for her honesty and sacrifice, as she is seen as an embodiment of ancient Chinese civilization's coexistence with and harmonizing influence on foreign cultures. You know, in my opinion, I actually think Wang Zhaojun was lucky that she went to the north because Chinese emperors, they have thousands of concubines and wives. And although she probably would have been the most beautiful, the most loved, there's so much politics and backstabbing that goes on in Ho Gong War Back Palace where the emperor's harem lives. And yeah, it's sad that she had to be away from her country and probably her family and her homeland, but I think she had a much more peaceful life in Mongolia. Anyway, guys, thank you all so much for watching and until next time, I'll see you later.